Okay, everybody, welcome back. This is continuing Chapter 6 on forces, and we're going to be doing example 6, 9. Um, I call this the fish scale problem. Um, in this problem, we have a fish in, uh, on a scale, okay, and it's, you might say it's being supported by the scale, and the whole fish scale system is in an elevator. All right? And as you know, elevators tend to go up and down, and so this elevator is going to be in different stages of motion. It's going to be either at rest, as indicated in part A, B, moving upwards, accelerating upwards, or C, moving down, or accelerating downwards. All right, now, one thing to point out right here, <coughs> excuse me, by the way, I still have a cold, so excuse my, my weird voice. <coughs> the, um, the fish will always have a weight force regardless of what direction the elevator is moving, okay? And it's always going to be directed downwards, and we call that mg. The upward force that supports the fish and causes the fish to move with the rest of the elevator, all right? We can call it um, the supporting force. That should be a capital F, not a lowercase f. The supporting force, or as we said before, the supporting force... Um, by the way, after all, this, this thing this is the only thing that is supporting the fish, this scale right here, this hook. As we said before, <coughs> the supporting force can also be thought of as the apparent weight. All right? Now, the fish is not being supported from below. It's being supported from above. But um, it doesn't matter. It's being supported. There's a, there's a vertical force that is keeping that fish um, from falling. And so in this case... That supporting force is actually measured by the scale, which is what scales actually do. So, our task here is to find the apparent weight of the, the, um, of the fish okay, at various different stages of motion. At rest, moving upwards with an acceleration of that, moving with a downward acceleration, and then we'll just kind of conceptually talk about part D, and I think that'll, that'll make sense to you. Okay? So, let's look. And so I'm going to divide this into kind of four parts right here, all right, four quadrants. Um, okay, there we go. Um, remember, you can, um, you, are in, or you should draw a free body diagram, okay? So here's our fish right there. Yes, I know it's horrible. And um, so A, and that's going to be up here, okay? Part A the fish is going to have a weight force, mg, and some sort of supporting force, or we're going to call that the apparent weight. All right. In fact, I'll write that out, supporting. It's the same thing. The supporting force, the apparent weight, the force that is required to keep that fish from falling, and the scale will measure that. That's what we're solving for right there, the apparent weight. So whatever you want to call it, the supporting force, <coughs> Apparent weight, that's what we're solving for, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. All right, in part A, what do we know about uh, this fish right here? Well, the, uh, the whole system, the net force on the system equals zero. Why? Because the acceleration is zero. That is, that is at rest, okay? Mass times acceleration of the system well, if that's zero, then that means the net force in the system equals zero. Okay, this elevator is completely at rest. All right, but it's also true that the net force um, on the fish, excuse me here for a second, there we go, uh, the net force on the fish, my goodness, what's going on here? I'm not able to write. There we go. Uh, in terms of the component forces, that is adding up all the negatives and the positives, C O M P, can be described as the apparent weight minus mg, right? The weight force. The weight force is always directed downwards. Um, but the apparent weight may change depending on what the system is doing right there. All right, well, if these two statements right here are equal, Right? They're the both statements for the net force, so we can say the apparent weight minus mg equals zero newtons, right? 
net force in the system is zero. So we can say, okay, well, the, the apparent weight. I'm having a hard time writing right here. There we go. Equals m g equals the weight force. And that should make sense. If you're in an elevator that is not moving, your weight would be what it normally is if you're not moving. And uh, what I'm going to do is, for the sake of time, instead of calculating that all out, I'm just going to let you go ahead and do that. We know the mass of the fish. Uh, that's 5 kilograms. And we know the um, acceleration of gravity. And so you can solve for that right there. All right. Part B. We have a little bit different scenario. In part B, we have an elevator, the fish in the elevator, that is moving upwards at some velocity. Actually, some increasing velocity, right? It's moving upwards. And so here's a fish in the elevator right there. And there is some supporting force or weight. That's the apparent weight right there. It looks like WAP. should be W-A-P-P. Acting upwards because something you just need to support it because not only is the whole system moving upwards, but also the weight of the fish, M-G, needs to be supported as well. All right, so this is part B right here. All right. <clears throat> in this case, the net force on the system is not zero. How do we know that? Well, because we know that the whole system is accelerating. So we can say the net force on the system equals the mass times the acceleration of the system. All right. Even though there's an elevator involved, all we really care about is the mass of the fish. Um, and so we're trying to find out what at what rate that fish is accelerating. Well, we know what that is. The acceleration of the system um, is, in fact, I'll just write it out right here, okay? 5.0 kilograms times the acceleration of the system. We know that, that it is upwards. It is 2.5 meters per second squared upwards. Sorry, that's kind of hard to see right there. 2.5. It's getting worse and worse. All right? But it is also true that the net force in terms of components equals the apparent weight minus mg. The weight for the actual weight force of the fish is directing downwards. The apparent weight, or you might say the supporting force that the scale is providing, is acting upwards. <coughs> and so we can set these two statements equal to each other apparent weight minus the weight force equals the mass of the fish times the acceleration of the system, which is going to be very different from the acceleration of gravity because it's actually moving upwards. We know what all those are, and so um, you're solving for the apparent weight right here. You can go ahead and do that because we have all these statements. We know what the mass of the fish is. We know gravity, we know the mass of the fish again, and we know the acceleration of the system. So we can solve for our apparent weight. Okay? Thirdly, in part C, we have basically the same scenario. All right? In part C, we have the elevator moving, or accelerating, I should say, but it's accelerating downwards. All right, and my elevator drawings keep getting worse and worse. Um, and I drew the fish upside down, too. Well, it doesn't matter. Um, the fish has a downwards weight force, but also some unknown upward supporting force, right? The apparent, apparent weight or the supporting force, whatever you want to call it, that is being direct, directed upwards right there. All right? In part C, the difference is <coughs> excuse me, the acceleration of that system is now in the negative. Right? It is negative uh, 3.2 meters per second squared. How do we know? Well, because that whole system is moving downwards. All right? And as you know, in being in an elevator, when the elevator all of a sudden jerks downwards, all right, and starts accelerating downwards, you actually feel a different weight. 
And what's that going to be? Well, we're actually going to set this up very much like part B, except it's just going to be a different cell acceleration, right? We know that the net force on any system, system being the fish, is the mass of the system of the fish times the acceleration of the system. That's right up above right there. Also true. Speaking in components is the fact that we have the apparent weight, the supporting force that is being provided to the fish by the scale, minus the weight force. So once again, we take these forces, the positive forces and the negative forces, add or subtract them, and we have a statement for the forces, the component forces, on an object or on a system. Well, let's set them equal to each other, right? And this is going to look a lot like the previous one. The apparent weight minus the weight force equals the mass of the fish times acceleration, the times right there, of that system. The only difference here is that the acceleration of this system up here is positive. The acceleration of this system is negative, and so we're going to get a different uh, value for our apparent weight. You know what all these other values are, so you can solve for the apparent weight right here. And I'll let you go ahead and do that. Finally, we could calculate d out um, by saying that, okay, what, what would it cause for the, fi the fish to be weightless? Well, it can't ever really be weightless because the fish always has mass and, it's, and it is subject to gravity. But the apparent weight, we're told, is zero newtons. All right, so if it appears to weigh nothing, what must be happening? Well, instead of calculating this out, which we could, I'm just going to do sort of a thought experiment right here. What would happen to you if you were in an elevator, you being a fish, and you were weightless? Nothing was supporting you, and yet you weren't, um, and you weren't touching the floor or the, or the ground or anything. What would, what would be happening? Well, it would probably mean, <coughs> excuse me, that the elevator cable had, broke, had broken, and you are now hurtling down the elevator shaft in free fall. And that's exactly what's happening. The acceleration of this system has to be in free fall, or negative g, or that is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. So if you find yourself in an elevator, and all of a sudden you're weightless, that may seem cool for a few seconds, but that's actually a pretty bad sign because it means you are uh, hurtling down the elevator shaft and are probably going to experience a pretty abrupt stop um, in the near future. So you don't want that to, have to ha happen. But the fact that the whole system is accelerating downwards, okay, acceleration of the system is accelerating downwards, will cause the fish to experience weightlessness, and that's what's happening right there. So these are the three uh, or three or four different ways we can set up this kind of problem. That, uh, for changing apparent weight, but the key here is that your weight, your mg, <coughs> does not change. Rather, your apparent weight, or the supporting force holding you up, does change, and that's what's going to make you feel heavier or lighter depending on how your system is accelerating. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, please contact me, but in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.